Philip. My job today is to tell you a little bit about our policy direction and to build on some of the stuff that Philip has said about why we've set up the JLT. Um, like Philip said, I'm a businesswoman. I'm an EdTech entrepreneur. So those of you who know me won't be too surprised when I say that the JLC is the party of business. We are also a party with a deep social conscience. The two are not mutually exclusive. In fact, we believe that it's the success of business that will enable us to fulfill our socially liberal agenda. When businesses succeed, we can all succeed. We want businesses to feel confident and able to grow and continue to create opportunity for others. We value individual success as well as business success and we want Jersey to continue to be a place where it's easy to do business. We want more people to be able to start their own businesses and try out their ideas. <coughs> as an island, we need to increase productivity to escape the dependency ratio that we're currently in. We d meaning we don't need to rely so much on large numbers of the working population. The way to increase productivity is to embrace technology and invest in educating our workforce. We will not get there by preserving the status quo. <coughs> we will need to increase our uh, educational output significantly. We need a workforce that adapts quickly we need to prepare young people for a different world. We need to draw out creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, reward investigation and curiosity, develop positive attitudes to learning, and we need to improve employability. As a group, we feel that Jersey needs to move on from the rhetoric of putting children first to the action of changing outcomes. We want to develop policies that create opportunity and we want to support children and young people with early intervention, focus on improving well-being and creating diversion and outlets for young people. We want Islanders to know that we find it wholly unacceptable that in an island as prosperous as Jersey there is a school and there may be more, where it rains inside. We find it wholly unacceptable that looked after children are not being supported well enough to reach their full potential, or that social services are not still being appropriately resourced. <coughs> Investments in services and infrastructure will be needed. Schools and colleges need to be repositioned at the heart of our community as places for children and young people to learn and enrich their lives, as well as a place for parents to access services without being stigmatized, get help, and embark on their own learning journeys. Education is the strongest driver of social mobility, but it's a hard sell politically because there are no quick wins. Politicians know that the public won't see the effects of any changes for years, so they rarely focus enough on it to have a meaningful impact. We need to create opportunity for young people, otherwise they won't stay. And if they don't stay, we will need to continue to have to import our carers and teachers and waiters and nurses and chefs. Similarly, we need to make it affordable to stay and live in Jersey, which brings us to housing. It's simply not right that a family earning an average salary cannot aspire to earn their own home. It's a challenging area of policy. It requires balancing a range of conflicting interests from protecting home owners' values uh, of their homes to avoiding uncontrolled, inappropriate land development. But if we fail to ensure that the market works in favor of lower income households and first time buyers, we risk continuing to lose our homegrown talent. The liberal in us also believes that businesses should pay people properly 
and that government should set the minimum wage on par with the living wage. We intend to work with businesses for whom this is more challenging, namely agriculture and hospitality. But we also know that current staff shortages are already pushing salaries up in this industry. The conservative in us prefers a smaller government. We don't think that government is the vehicle to deliver much of the change we need. Instead, we believe in enabling the third sector to drive the positive change that our community needs without being tied up to government agenda. Finally, in terms of policy areas, I'd like to touch on the most pressing issue of our time, the environment. It needs active, long-term protection for it constitutes our wonderful heritage. We must conserve the stunning beaches, cliff, parks, headlands, countryside that make up our Jersey. Development in our green zones should be resisted. As Philip said, the Minister for the Environment should be the advocate for cleaner air and cleaner water, for well-designed, greener homes, for our thriving biodiversity and sustainable agricultural practices, sustainable fisheries, and green recreational spaces for people, particularly those who live in urban areas. We need government reports that include fully costed plans to deliver on these agreed objectives. <coughs> so in short, the JLC is pro-business and we have a strong social conscience. We stand for progress and innovation and the conservation of our environment, of our cherished island culture. We prefer a small government and a thriving voluntary sector. And we underpin our values on a shared purpose of creating an environment where every person has the opportunity to thrive. This can only be delivered through competent leadership based on our values and aims. Ultimately, we intend to lead Jersey into being a better place for everyone. We are in the process of developing our policy areas further, but I hope that at least now you have an idea of where we stand and what our key focuses are. And I'd like to finish with some final thoughts on the need to engage the broader community. Voters are disenfranchised. And we hope that political parties will help by bringing people together under one banner. We will need to take heed of people's frustrations and take great care to address their issues without increasing divisions in our society. I believe that we need to work very hard to change the public's perceptions of politicians. Economic insecurity <coughs> and an increase in social deprivation have fueled a resentment of the political classes, a sense of entitlement, entitlement sometimes, no purpose or motivation, and lack of personal <coughs> responsibility makes it easy to think that the better offs are some sort of puppet masters controlling everything, the haves taking away from the have-nots. Political discourse is destroyed when we pit people against each other, and it's easier to blame all our misfortune on others than it is to roll up our sleeves. But social mobility isn't an easy process. I am proof that it can be done though. I started adulthood as a single mother and an economic migrant that needed the help of tax credits to cover the bills. We are at crossroads in Jersey politics and with the start of political parties and movements like ours, we have a choice between two parts. We can choose to pander to populism, tell people what they want to hear. We can choose to feed identity politics and sow even more divisions in our society. We can choose to attack and denigrate each other. We can choose to back those intent on exploiting any fracture in our social cohesion. Or we can choose to focus on rebuilding relationships re-enfranchising the community, we can choose to be thoughtful, gentle, and polite. That is the only way that we will attract the right people into politics. That is the only way to attract people with the right experience, be it professional or lived experience, whose heart is in the right place. 
Voters want politicians that can deliver action, not politicians that are good at being politicians. Shirking answers, managing their image, doing backroom deals. In a democracy, the people get the government that they deserve. And I think that the people of Jersey deserve better, which is why we're here today asking you to support a better future.